The 200 meters has been present on the Olympic athletics program since the year 1900. While the Olympic races measured 200 meters, some other meets ran 220-yard races. Nevertheless, 220-yard times were also eligible for 200-meter record consideration until the mid-1960s. The first official world record for the 200-meter on a curved track was ratified only in 1951 due to the inconsistencies in how the race had been run. The first man to earn the title World's Fastest Human was American Bernard Weffers, who held unofficial but generally accepted world record of 21.2 for 220 yards set in 1896. In 1923, Charlie Paddock, another American, ran 21 flat. He represented his country at three Olympic Games, winning 100-meter gold and two silvers for the 200 meters. Paddock became famous for his unusual finishing style, leaping towards the finish line at the end of the race. By 1932, both Ronald Locke of the US and Australia's James Carlton had run the 200 in 20.6. Those times weren't beaten until 1960, although the performances are not considered the official IAAF records today. The first 200-meter world record officially recognized by the IAAF belongs to the American Andy Stanfield, who ran a 220-yard race in 20.6 in 1951. Stanfield matched that time in a 200-meter event the following year. Four other runners equaled Stanfield's time over the next eight years, and then Peter Radford of Great Britain finished in 20.5 seconds in a 220-yard race in 1960. Three more runners matched Radford later that year in 200-meter events, with Italy's Livio Berruti turning the trick twice, and then American Paul Drayton, who joined the crowd in 1962. Henry Carr of the US then lowered the 200-meter standard, reaching 20.2 for 220 yards in 1964. It was turning to an all-American affair in 1966 when 21-year-old Tommy Smith hit the 20-second flat mark at the 220-yard to set the last 220-yard world record ratified by the IAAF. That year, Smith also broke the world record for the 200 over the straight when he covered the distance in 19.5. This was the first sub-20 seconds 200 meters straight or turn with a legal win. Smith clocked 9.3 in the second hundred of the race. Only 44 years later, Tyson Gay of the USA managed to run faster. On the specially constructed track at the Great City Games in Manchester, Gay sprinted all out for a phenomenal 9.88 in the opening 100 meters and despite tiring legs, finished up with the second 100 meters in 9.53. At the U.S. Olympic Trials in 1968, John Carlos beat Smith and his world record running in 19.92. Carlos's record was disallowed because of the brush spike shoes he was wearing. The IAAF banned the brush spikes before the Summer Olympics 1968 with the excuse that the spikes would damage the tracks. At the 1968 Summer Olympics in Mexico, Smith nursed an injured hamstring into the 200-meter final. In the race, teammate John Carlos powered out to the lead covering the first 100 meter in 10.3, while Smith got a slow start and was a meter behind with 10.4. Coming off the turn, Smith charged past Carlos and sped to victory. Knowing he had passed his training partner and closest foe, his victory was so clear he raised his arms to celebrate 10 meter before the finish line. Still, he improved upon his own world record running the second hundred in an astonishing 9.4. Smith's time of 19.83 was the fastest recorded fully electronic 200-meter sprint up to that time. Eleven years later, on the same track, Pietro Menea of Italy was absolutely confident that he could break the world record. He claimed that he was the best 200-meter sprinter in the world. In the 200-meter final of the World University Games, he proved that. Menea won in a time of 19.72, running the second 100 meter in just 9.38.
The validity of this mark drew criticism over the years due to the fact that it had been recorded at high altitude, but it just emphasized that he was indeed the fastest man in the world over 200 meter, Menea clocked a time of 19.96 at his hometown of Barletta in 1980, which was the fastest time ever recorded at low altitude. Menea's mark stood for 17 years, making it the longest surviving 200 meter world record. The time still stands as the European record. In 1983, at the national championships, Carl Lewis might easily have broken it. He won the title in 19.75, with the splits very similar to that of Menea, 10.35 and 9.40. But he eased up 15 meters from the tape with an easy victory. If he had run hard through the tape, his time might have been close to 19.65. At the Olympic Games in Barcelona, Mike Marsh ran 19.73 in the semi-finals with such ease that he led up 10 meters before the finish. No doubt, if he continued all the way, he would have broken the record. Marsh tried too hard in the finals and ran 20.01. He won a gold medal and looked disappointed. Menea's reign ended in 1996, when American Michael Johnson shattered the mark at the US Olympic Trials, where he finished in 19.66 seconds with 10.25 for the first 100 meter and 9.39 for the home stretch. With that performance, he qualified to run at the 1996 Summer Olympics in Atlanta, where he planned to complete an unprecedented 200-400 double. The 400 was a formality. He had coasted through three rounds before racing to an Olympic record of 43.49 to win the final by nine tenths of a second. He had his first gold, but the 200 meter final was the race he'd been gunning for all along. When the gun went off, Johnson stumbled out of the blocks a bit, but quickly recovered and ran the curve brilliantly, coming through the first 100 in 10.12. He ran the straightaway in 9.2, finishing the race in a world record time of 19.32. Breaking by more than three tenths of a second, the previous record he had set in the US Olympic trials, the largest improvement ever on a 200 meter world record. With that achievement, Johnson went into uncharted territory, and experts thought his record would stand forever. It was the absolute best result in all of athletics, worth 1,329 points, according to the IAAF scoring tables. For example, the 100-meter equivalent of that is 9.65, and in 1996, the 100-meter world record stood at 9.84. But even the greatest records are meant to be broken and Johnson's record fell 12 years later at the 2008 Olympics in Beijing. Usain Bolt sprinted hard all the way, even dipping his chest to the finishing line. He became the first sprinter to run sub-10 seconds for the first 100 in a 200-meter race. With the split times of 9.98 and 9.32, he improved Johnson's record by two hundredths of a second. The following year, Bolt once again produced world record-breaking time in the 200-meter final at the World Championships in Berlin. He ran the first 100 meters in 9.92, the second in 9.27, and broke his own record by 11 hundredths of a second, finishing with a time of 19.19. He won the race by the largest margin in the World Championships history even though the race had three other athletes running under 19.90, the greatest number ever in the event. As we can see, most of the improvement on the world record came from a faster first half of the race, while the second 100 meters was always somewhere around 9.3. The world record has been standing almost 10 years now. Can anyone break it anytime soon? Michael Johnson ran 18.5 seconds on a 4200 meter relay as a collegiate athlete, and the race when he ran in 19.32 was not perfect. In 2011, at Diamond League final in Brussels, Johan Blake clocked 19.26, the second fastest time ever. His reaction time of 0.269 was the slowest in the nine-man field, giving rise to speculation that Bolt's time might have been refreshed if he had reacted in 0.16 or better. Moreover, Blake ran the second half of the race in 9.12, which is the fastest in the history. The world record holder himself never ran a perfect 200-meter race. 
with a better race distribution, not so hard the first hundred, faster and more relaxed the second, which he was totally capable of in his prime, the record might already stand at 18.99. Thank you.